there's a lot there's a lot of different types of nebulas but this is a smaller one that's caused specifically from a supernova which happens when a really big really um, energetic star dies out in a huge explosion um, and so this is Orion's belt, which is his most distinctive feature, but he's also seen um, depicted with, I think in this artwork, um, a club and uh, a hide, but uh, he's also seen um, maybe with a, a bow and a quiver of arrows, whatever your interpretation is. Um, and there are some pretty cool uh, uh, ob objects that we can point out within Orion as well. So on Orion's shoulder is a star called Betelgeuse. Betelgeuse is a star that um, could possibly go supernova any day now. So I just talked about how supernovas um, occur at the end of a really energetic star's lifetime. And we can tell that Betelgeuse has come towards the end of its lifetime because it's gotten really big and really red um, and it's starting to um, uh, get ready to um, explode. Uh, also within the constellation of Orion, uh, let's pull down the artwork so we can see this a little bit better, but uh, right next to um, his leg right here, we can see this sort of uh, string of stars. This is our Orion Nebula, and we can pull up an image um, that was taken of the Orion Nebula by, I believe that this one is from, this one's from the Hubble Space Telescope. Um, so this is a different type of nebula than the one I showed you earlier. Uh, this is a, a nebula that causes star birth rather than one that's formed from, star, uh, from stars dying. And so uh, all, all the different stars that you're seeing within, um, especially the smaller dimmer ones that are within this nebula, are all new stars that have just been formed with, within these gases. So our Big Dipper yeah. is right here in the sky. Um, technically, the Big Dipper is not a constellation. It's what we call an asterism, which is just a grouping of stars that we can use to find other objects in the night sky. But um, uh, it's just it didn't make the cut as one of the 88 official constellations that uh, make up our sky. Um, but it is part of a larger constellation called Ursa Major which we can just add a couple more lines onto, um, onto the Big Dipper, and that is going to give us Ursa Major, our big bear. Um, to find our little bear, we can take the uh, two ends of the, of the Dipper right there, uh, two, these two stars right here, and trace out to this star right here called Polaris. Anybody know another name for Polaris? No, a star that is correct. And Polaris is the tail end of our little Dipper, uh, Ursa Minor. Um, uh, it, it's a pretty common misconception that um, the Little Dipper is as easy to spot as the Big Dipper, but that's really not true. The Big Dipper is composed of seven very bright stars that's easy to spot even if you're in an area with a lot of light pollution. But uh, if you're uh, closer to the cities um, or uh, you happen to be in an area that it's somewhat harder to see the stars, the only stars that you're going to uh, be able to uh, see within the Little Dipper or Polaris, and maybe these two. So it's a real, it's a lot harder to find, and that's why we have to use that Big Dipper to um, to point to it. Now I mentioned that Polaris is our, our, our North Star, but it hasn't always been our North Star, nor will it always be our North Star. So this has to do with the fact that when the Earth spins on its axis, uh, axis the, that the Earth spins on, so what creates our North and South Pole, um, has changed over the course of thousands of years. So 5,000 years ago, our North Star was over here, over a star called Thuban in the constellation of Draco, which snakes in between um, the Big and Little Dipper. So think back when the pyramids were being built, the stars were uh, in a completely different position. Well, not completely, but a slightly shifted position. Um, and so the constellations that the pyramids line up to no longer line up with the sky as it is now. And then another 5,000 years, uh, the North Star will point all the way over here, and in 10,000 years, it'll be all the way over here. And over the oh, 25,000 years, it'll finally come back and make a complete um, full circle and be back to Polaris. Um, and a certain neighboring state might call it a, a W, but it's actually an M. And, um, <laughs> and this is the constellation of Cassiopeia. Uh, Cassiopeia we can use to find one of, in my opinion, the coolest objects in our night sky that's visible with the naked eye. Um, if we take the point 
of Cassiopeia and point to this uh, blurry blob right there. Uh, that is the Andromeda Galaxy. The Andromeda Galaxy is the only thing that's in our entire night sky that um, humans can see uh, with the naked eye without any sort of telescope or binoculars or anything um, that does not lie within the Milky Way Galaxy. So it's the furthest away object that you're able to see. Um, we can uh, make it a bit bigger so you can see it a bit more. Um, so this is our, the Andromeda Galaxy, which is our closest galactic neighbor. Um, the Andromeda Galaxy is much bigger than the Milky Way Galaxy. The Milky Way Galaxy has about 200 billion stars in it, whereas the Andromeda Galaxy has um, over a trillion stars in it. So over time, this is a very common thing that happens in space. Uh, galaxies collide all the time with each other. First, they tend to do a bit of a flyby, um, and uh, the composition of these galaxies change a lot during this period of time. So you can see that the shape has completely changed to something else. The galaxies themselves have become a lot brighter because uh, their gases have uh, run into each other and gotten more energized, and now a bunch of new stars are being formed because of that collision. Um, and then eventually they'll come back together and form into one much larger uh, galaxy. Now, what's really uh, deceiving about this animation is that it looks like everything's crashing into each other, like that. but in reality, there is so much empty space in space that hardly anything at all will actually uh, collide with each other. There will be hardly any uh, uh, star collisions or planet collisions or anything like that. The most that will happen is that gases will interact with each other. Um, and so our own uh, solar system will remain completely uh, unchanged by this uh, whole process that's happening, especially since it takes, the over, uh, takes course over the course of um, millions, if not billions of years for this whole process to happen. Um, five, four, four three, three, two, two one. one. Blast off. Oh. Oh, wow. So now not only are we able to see the constellations that aren't visible during the winter time, so like our summer constellations, our fall constellations, our spring constellations, but we're also able to see constellations that we're never able to see in the northern hemisphere because they're only visible if you're in the southern hemisphere. And then as we start to move out a bit further, um, you'll notice that um, you can see the difference in the shape of the stars. Um, and their yeah. different distances that they are from each other. You get a bit of a 3D model of what we're looking at. Okay, that is... Uh... Uh... And as we zoom out a bit further, you're going to see um, a view of our entire Milky Way galaxy and just what portion of the sky that um, lies within the entire Milky Way galaxy. Wow. Wow. And if we zoom out a little bit further, um, we'll be able to start to see some other galaxies starting to show up. <laughs> 